My name is Sebastian and in this video I want to share my favorite tips and tricks on how to use IntelliJ more effectively. I know there is a ton of material out there on this IDE, but I think with just a few tips and shortcuts you actually can get more, much more effective already. And I myself only use a handful of them, but I use them very, very often and I want to share them with you. I got asked a few times why my setup actually looks that weird in IntelliJ. So I have some weird line numbering here and the cursor as well, which is because I use IdeaVim for the Vim emulation. I created some resources in a video about the Vim way of typing already and why that makes sense and why it makes you much more effective in typing. And I think it's just a great combination to have that with your IDE as well, because then I have the feature of them and of course of the IDE. So that's one thing and I can then just move around very quickly. And with this relative line numbering, I can, for example, for example, jump two lines up or six lines down very, very quickly. So this works pretty well. But now for the coding or for the IDE feature, one thing that I constantly use without even thinking about it is control shift enter for en uh, for um, completing a statement so for example if i try uh, type something like system out print line and i don't even finish uh, the statement yet here you can see actually it also tries to finish the quotes or complete the quotes i just typed one for now but now if i'm here hello world i don't have to jump to the end i just say control shift enter and it will try to guess it will try to autocomplete that it would even work without the second quote and it would just try to do something that makes sense which works really really well especially if i have some nested methods uh, where i have another uh, method call here and then it will just um, finish it with two brackets even if the method doesn't exist here so that is one thing that i type all the time i even type it much more then control space to typical auto completion command, which shows me the fields and methods available. So that's one control shift enter that I use all the time. Another one is alt enter that just shows some suggestions, for example, to fix some errors or to just suggest something else, for example, doing a static import for out here. And that's another thing that I use all the time. What is also helpful is formatting with um, uh, auto importing with control alt L. So I also hit this all the time and these shortcuts, I don't even think about them anymore. I even before when I finished editing a file, I just hit that automatically and then it will get formatted, which is um, quite nice. So that's another thing. And then for navigating around, that is uh, then the next uh, topic, how to well navigate in my code. Why? Because in general, and you know this if you have seen some of my material, I always tell developers, use your keyboard and stay on the keyboard. So don't try to use the mouse for uh, moving around and you don't have to. So for example, control N will just go you to uh, get you to some class. If I, for example, go to the hello class, I'm already there. Let's take another one, coffee order. Let's jump there and it just um, works here. The same works for control shift uh, for a file and all of these searches that you could uh, search here, you see the navigation window. So this is very much, I think it's, com it's kind of like searching in the web, like uh, searching on a website, you're just navigating around um, by searching and then jumping somewhere. In the same way, shift shift is basically search all. So I can have either a class or having something like settings and then it will just show me all kinds of settings there. That is just very helpful as well because if you don't know where to find some, uh, for example, database um, view, then I just uh, insert it here and I'm already there. By the way, that's another one, shift escape, that just uh, closes some windows where I don't have to use my mouse again to just close these things. In the same way for navigating, what I sometimes use is the uh, Explorer on the left so I can open this with Alt and 1, or if I want to jump to the current file, I can say Alt F1, project view, like Alt F1 enter, and then I'm already in this view. What is very nice with the Vim support, that in this view, I now can also use the Vim bindings for navigating around. So for example, J and K, 
and this is just a little bit faster to use. If I want to search something, I can press slash and then search for deployment and so on. So this works also, that's uh, I think well thought out, and then I can navigate without uh, using my mouse. What else is very helpful in the code? And these are just a few examples um, what I'm using. So I'm actually, I don't even know all the refactoring features and all that stuff uh, by heart. I have a few um, that is uh, that are available. For example, if I say control alt V for extract a variable. And I think they're very easy to remember. Why? Because this is the uh, mnemonic key of V for variable. And this also works for control alt p for parameter which here of course doesn't make sense or c for constant or f for field and so on and so forth so if you once you you know notice the pattern then this really makes sense and you don't even have to remember them uh, by heart it's kind of natural which is really nice uh, what else uh, is helpful is like the opposite if you um, have let's say another string To inline this, uh, if then I would say Control Alt N to, I think I have to do it here. Yes, inline, and then refactor, and that's you know the other way around. If I would extract another variable and then go back, so this also works. And these are basically uh, the few ones that I'm using here. Sometimes I use just because I try to stay on the keyboard. Um, I use the context menu key and then either go around with my keyboard depends or even cooler if and this is a very well uh, thought out pattern you press the underlined uh, mnemonic keys then you can say for example refactor and then extract method and there you go and if you do context menu refactor um, refactor extract method then also at some point you will know this well there's also control alt m which is another shortcut that i use regularly which you can also use here so that's uh, kind of cool for navigating in the code uh, what also works uh, well control b for following the um the method which here is a java method uh, a jdk method um which at first for me was a little bit uh, non-intuitive why is it, it is b but you get used to it um and the other thing i have to see where uh, it makes sense if i would have a super class no, I don't have it here, but for example, closable, then I could go control alt B, which then um, gets me to some implementations, which are a lot here on this JDK class. But for example, if you have a super class or an interface, a super type, then you can jump back down in the same way. Like if I would go to, and that's another shortcut, control F12 to just see the methods in this class. If I would go to this close method here, press, press control U, which jumps to the super method. So basically it's jumping down to the implementation or jumping up um, to if there is another um, uh, definition that is being overwritten. So that's also um, kind of helpful to just navigating around. But already with uh, control B, it's basically the same as if hitting control and click, which is uh, what a lot of developers are doing. But it's just faster if you know, you're moving around in the code to do this instead of uh, clicking around or changing to your mouse. So I think this is a very um, important point that as much as possible, we should try to stay on the keyboard. And luckily, this works well in IntelliJ. Why? Because most of the menus actually allow this to um, well just use the alt key or just use some uh, mnemonic patterns to activate anything by the keyboard for example if i search here if i say find in files yeah that is on my windows setup I've, at first i have to uh, change the size and then it works um, for example find something in my project if i say well hello world then this already works as expected but i can also then switch um, some options here for example regex is now activated which i can toggle toggle here with alt x which you can see or match case or not and so on and so forth so all of these options if you look closely here the underlined keys are um, usually um, accessible via the uh, via the alt key 
which is very nice because once you get used to them, you can just navigate around without um, actually hitting your mouse. That's another thing that I recently just found out. You can uh, switch uh, the tabs here, the open tabs with Alt, Left, Right. And another thing quite helpful, if you make uh, some mistake here, you can jump to the next arrow. If you have a big a file pressing as, um, F2, then this helps a lot already. And many times, if you then hit the already known Alt and Enter, then you can uh, just see, well, maybe there's some, um, I don't know, some um, something that we could do with it. Well, now we have this that doesn't really make sense. But if I say, for example, uh, another, then we might say previous reuse, previous variable. Yeah. And that basically fixes the problem. So all I did was pressing F, uh, F2 and then it will just jump to an error or this is more like a, a warning or something. Well, this is weird notification. This is never used, right? Um, then it will jump to this as well. If there's an error, they have higher precedence. Otherwise, it jumps to these ones. So this is very helpful because if you have some compilation error, just jump to the next one and you will see what's going on. So this is it for, I think, the most uh, important uh, shortcuts for navigating and also um, navigating in your code. What I do a lot is I define and use um, live templates. So I, of course, use the ones that are provided, something like main for the main method. And more importantly, my own ones for um, the ones that are not shipped with IntelliJ, for example, for some frameworks that I'm using or sometimes even project specific stuff. So I use at inject a lot and I can define these not only with typing at inject, but also importing the correct type, which is very helpful because as you've seen, this is much faster than just typing it um, and selecting the correct import and uh, things like that. You can also have something like a post construct method, pre destroy method. This is what I use all the time. And then it makes sense to define some live templates and to use them rather than um, typing all that stuff over again. What is also very cool are so-called uh, post fix uh, notation uh, templates. So for example, if I say hello and then dot um, system out, then it also works afterwards, but then we'll wrap it into the method um, as an argument. So that's basically um, uh, the pendant to just writing uh, system out and then I can type it myself or if the string already exists um, I can say string dot system out or string dot um, if um, not null and so on and so forth there so there are a few available which um, are really helpful so just a handful of them will already uh, make you much more effective for all the stuff that you keep typing all over again then for executing things um, like running stuff there are just a few things that are helpful because you might execute stuff all the time. So if you, now that's again, context menu, run just this method where I am currently located, which is the hello main, then you see control shift F10 um, already executes this. Or if I already ran something somewhere, then just shift F10 will just repeat it wherever um, I've been. So if I uh, move to another class, I can also hit Shift F10, that works as well. Or, and these are just, again, I'm not a keyboard shortcut expert, but just a few that I just remember, not all of them, but for example, how to set a breakpoint. Well, um, Control F8, and then um, Shift um, F9 for just running this with a debug. Um, or control uh, shift F9 accordingly. And then I have the debug and in the debug mode, you will quite quickly get used to all of these keys. It's like F8, F9 for uh, stepping over, stepping into, uh, continuing and so on and so forth. So that comes quite naturally once you um, are using um, uh, the debugger. What else is, let me start this again. So now here you see that context menu, if I just uh, hit F9. Uh, what else is quite helpful if I here jump into the wi window. So I told you Alt uh, Alt One jumps into this project window, but I could also run um, go to Run with uh, Alt Four or Debug with Alt Five, and then I can press Insert for having um, or press Context Menu or, or directly Insert for a new watch. So for example, to say Oh Wellis, 
what is my rx0 and well out of bounds exception uh, things like that so in these me menus that works um, nicely as well so i can close it again shift escape that's also a common uh, pattern and these things just help a lot to navigate around let me stop this again i think it's control f2 and just these few uh, shortcuts for running stuff uh, help you. If you don't know all of these, especially now, don't worry. Again, navigating in the menu helps you a lot. If I don't know that is F10 or F9, I can now see, well, where's the menu? It's up there for run. So I can, for example, hit Alt U for run. You see the underlined um, key. And then I could go well, either go here with my keyboard or just read Alt Shift F10, for example, or again, press the mnemonic keys like K for view breakpoints. So I can say, well, K and then I can watch my breakpoints, whatever. So again, you don't have to remember all of it. Just watch the menus. You can navigate around with your keyboard if you like. And the more you do this, the more you will uh, get used to them. So these are basically the main uh, tips that I'm using all the time when I uh, use IntelliJ. If this was a little bit too fast for you, you can watch the video again at a slower speed. And I um, included the keys that I'm pressing um, on, uh, on the bottom left. And I yeah, would be curious to hear your uh, tips and tricks if you have some other ones that I didn't cover. And I hope this was uh, helpful and interesting to watch. If you found the video helpful, I would really appreciate if you give it a, a thumbs up and if you subscribe to my channel. And thanks a lot for watching. Bye.